And this is uh, your daily meta for today. Uh, gosh, so many things have been uh, started up already. We could be talking about a lot of different things. But uh, I want to use the occasion to mention things that I've learned since the book or parallels that have happened since the book, which is almost 15 years ago now. And in the book, I tell a story about a nurse in an, op in an ER in Los Angeles, Nurse Joan Black. Uh, a deranged woman runs into the ER with a gun and uh, Nurse Black walks over to her, puts her hand on the hand with the gun, keeps it down and starts saying to her things like, I, "This, you're going to be all right. We all have these difficulties. I've had some too. And in the end, she calms the woman down and gets her to relinquish the gun and nobody gets hurt. And uh, very recently, there was a much more dramatic case of the same thing with a woman named Antoinette Tuff, who was the accountant, the bookkeeper in a very large school in Decatur, uh, Georgia, and uh, there were 825 students in the school. A young guy comes in, he's bipolar, off his medicine, and this time he doesn't have an, an automatic, a little revolver like the woman in the ER. He has an assault rifle with a backpack full of ammunition, and he says everybody's going to die. And she does pretty much the same thing. She says, uh, you're going to be all right, honey. I love you. I have some troubles too. Do you want to hear about my divorce? And in the end, she saves 825 children. So it's exactly the same dynamic. And in both cases, we see several things in common. For one, these women, without being consciously aware of it, are using a pattern that was developed in the ancient world. You have Greek and Roman writers thousands of years ago telling you how to buck up a person who's depressed or talk down a person who's agitated and they go through certain steps and these women are following those steps and I outline some of them in search. The second thing they have in common is that the press does not get it. In the ca case of Joan Black, they got her to say, that was the stupidest thing I ever did, whereas in reality it was the most heroic. And in the case of Antoinette Tuff, even though they gave her a lot of courage and they called her a hero, one of the networks pulled the program, pulled the coverage very quickly because, quote, nobody got killed. So this the whole point was that nobody got killed, but they, they felt that there wasn't newsworthy for that reason. And so looking at the bigger picture, uh, my point then, and it's reinforced now with the second episode, is that we are seeing nonviolence working all the time and we're not getting it. We are ignoring the lesson. And the reason for that is that we don't have the pattern, the model built into our mind so that we can recognize what these people did and how it works. So we say, whew, she was lucky, she was dumb, that was a fluke. And we write it off and we go back to the same old, same old. Now, just one other thing I'll mention that in the case of Antoinette Tuff, it was so obvious you had all this elaborate equipment to protect the school. You had this uh, electric gate that you know, you, they wouldn't let people in. So the, the killer, would-be killer, walked right in, right behind a teacher. Uh, and the uh, SWAT team, the SWAT team came and almost ruined everything. So in both cases, you have a, an elaborate mechanical-based system that failed and a human being that succeeded. And we need somehow to rebuild our model of the world and who we are so that we can understand what that human potential is and develop it. Until tomorrow then, if you like what you're hearing, you are invited to join the experiment.